today we're going to be looking at some of the rocks we collected, Benny and Paulie and I, when we went on our little um, adventure. <laughs> it's been a while since I've done some cutting and polishing, so that's what we're going to do today. So here, it's just basically a big collection of Chalcedony mainly. You got the um, Carnelian, it looks beautiful. The other thing about this area is the blue colors in it. It just, I don't know, I'm speechless. That's all broken up. If you saw the video, you can see it was cracked through it before we extracted it. And um, I gave Benny and Paulie probably the better bits, <laughs> the bigger bits, just because I don't know if I can really do much with it. I've got this piece here and it's, it's stunning. Like you can see the little bands in it, but to be honest, I really don't know what else I could do with it other than just sort of look at it and keep it as a reminder of what's out there. So the first rock I'm going to be cutting today is this guy. He's pretty. Oh, I cut I cut the brick every so often just to, to clean any, it's sort of like it sharpens the blade. I forget the word for it. But yeah, this rock, you can see it's got that light, milky sort of calcedony in there. There's also a bit of carnelian type stuff. There could be bands in there. So with this one, I'm going to go for length. So I'm going to try and cut him. Right across there, we'll see what's happening inside him. <laughs> it looks beautiful in there. I'm not gonna show you because I normally like to keep that for the end, but it looks beautiful. Next rock, all right. This one, it's got some clear calcedony in there, a little bit of mammillaries on the top there, which is that bubbly growth pattern sort of thing. It's got a bit of rhyolite on there. Harder rhyolite, silicated rhyolite. Yeah, let's cut him up and we'll see how he goes. I had one comment from a guy who said, mate, how can you call it a beautiful stone and then waste 90% of it? I try my best not to waste it. I had to take a slice off to get inside a bit more. And um, yeah, maybe a little freeform cab. I don't know. I don't do cabs right now because I don't have the tools to. All right, that one's done. This one. He's got mammillaries there. It's hard to see in this light. There's little white bits in there, down in that mammillary. But I really like that. I want to showcase that and that. So I'll be taking a little slice off here, smoothing that out a bit. I will be cutting this part off here and a little bit into that guy. I don't know, we'll see how it works. I want to polish all around there. We'll see how we go. Oh, oh again. It feels so good. <laughs> it feels so good when it turns out right. I am happy with it. Yeah, that's uh, different than what I expected, but I cannot wait to show it. <laughs> I think for the cuts today, I think that's going to be it. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. Okay, so since since doing my cutting last time, I figured I don't have enough rocks. I'm gonna do one of these and one of them. These two are two of the bigger ones that we found that day and they're a little bit too big for the tile saw. So we've enlisted the help of Benny and his trusty concrete cutter. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice one. Oh, look at the colors in there, dude. Green greens and stuff. Oh yeah, bro. Oh, that's looking cool. Yeah. That cloud. I got the point pretty good, eh? Yeah, that was great, dude. Thank you, Benny. Jeez, there's some sharp bits. Well done, brother. Thanks, Chris. No worries. Thank you. Good time. In order to polish these ones, I needed to head back to the tile saw just to smooth out some of those saw grooves and saw dags to make that first stage of polishing go a little bit easier. All right. Onto the polishing. 
got like maybe six hours before the sun goes down. <laughs> and that's it, so we'll see what we can do. To polish these stones, I use a variable speed rotary sander with diamond polish pads. It can take a little while, but that's when you're doing multiple rocks. If you want to see more about it, I'll leave a little link up the top here to a video where I explain more of how I do what I do and why. Here we go. Time to look at the rocks. Um, which one's the, I don't know which one's the show first. Let's go with this one first. Oh no, I'm wearing blue gloves so you don't see the blue as well. <laughs> I just polished the base of it because I wanted to keep those mamillaries there. But what's cool about it is on the inside, those things. What is that? I thought they may be some sort of crystal sort of structure, but I think they may just be fractures. This one, First thing I saw when I saw it coming out of the rock was that. It's got a nice polish to it. It's funny, the bands sort of disappear on some bits depending on how the angle at which you're viewing it sort of thing. Yeah, it's just a pretty little agate piece. I've still got the other half there, but I just did this by hand. Normally I probably would have just tumbled this. This one turned out pretty sweet. In there, that little pocket with the petroidals in there. That's chalcedony with a little bit of waterline. And then the outside, I actually thought that was light blue chalcedony and some carnelian that runs into each other, but it's actually common opal. You could feel it, it was a lot softer. Now the rhyolite in this thunder egg took a really beautiful polish, but you can see that little bit just up there that is a bit dull. See what I'm talking about? And that's because that part there is a bit more degraded rhyolite and it's a bit more porous. It's not as silicated as the stuff that's sort of in between the chalcedony or common apple. Not bad, I don't think. Next one is this guy. I am really happy with how it took a polish. And I wasn't expecting to see all of those. I don't know what they'd be called, like inclusions and stuff in there. I was trying to accentuate the, uh, the Millery Druzy, which normally if the sun's a bit brighter, it'll sparkle. But what I'm amazed with is just that. Look at that, you can see right into it. different growth layers and iron stuck in there, little bands, and it moves up to that thing. I just, I'm really happy with it. You can see some of the iron actually took a polish right there, like hematite almost. It's an odd one. I guess I did this piece to sort of challenge myself from just cutting it straight in half. I kinda ran into a problem here because I didn't, didn't know what to do with that chip. If I wanted to get rid of it, I would have had to cut that bit off and I would have lost that. So look, all in all, I'm, I am happy with it. Ooh. 
look inside there. The, oh, looks like marmalade. That side as well. I don't know, I just, it's something about it, it's just beautiful. Looks like those pieces are just suspended in this sort of honey looking stuff. And again, left the uh, the old food troidals and mamillaries right there on top. I just, I followed basically the natural shape of the stone on the back. Now that bit there just sits nicely like that. You can sort of have it sitting however you want, I guess. Look inside that. It's like that other one, just suspended things and just, uh, you can see it's just floating bits of chalcedony in there. There's little bits of green, it's very light green there. Almost bluish, but that's just the rhyolite and like a big deep pool of chalcedony. I'm happy with that. Very happy. And those were the polishes. Not my best. The next video, we're looking for them. Crystals. They're not the biggest in the world, but ooh, they're pretty. All right, that was the polishes and the cuts. Thank you again so much, mega much, massively, and I will um, see you then. <laughs> All right, bye bye. Check out the finders. Remember, check out the finders hashtag because there's heaps of people on there with good videos. All right, bye.